Scott, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Natalia Gechalova. I'm going to chair this session, which is focused on uh, assessment, particularly uh, alternative forms. And we are going to have uh, three speakers. The first one is uh, present on site, luckily. Uh, the other two will connect via Zoom. Uh, again, you already heard it so many times, but I'm going to repeat. Each speaker will speak 20 minutes, then 10 minutes for discussion, remarks, questions. Uh, after that, short five minute break, another speaker. Uh, so let me introduce our first uh, speaker, Laura Hall, which, uh, who is affiliated to the University of South Bohemia, uh, where she teaches uh, courses of general English for uh, bachelor degree students and also academic writing presentation skills for a master's degree. And she uh, is professionally interested in autonomous learning and especially integrated assessment she's going to talk about today. So, uh, Laura. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. I just wanted to say that the plenaries I've attended uh, this week were not only very interesting, but they tapped into uh, some issues that I also will uh, bring up today in my presentation on integrated language skills assessment. Uh, my aims are quite simple. I wish to share with you my enthusiasm for integrated assessment. Uh, I strongly believe it is an appropriate uh, form of assessment at the tertiary level. Uh, in order to do so, I will give you uh, some practical examples of how uh, um, integrated assessment works in practice. And if there is anybody out there who would like to um, do some research in this area with me, please contact me. Or uh, if not, you can also visit our department uh, in South Bohemia, because it's quite an innovative uh, department as such. Now, um, I'll move on uh, to the next slide. <laughs> uh, this one, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the definition of uh, integrated assessment. So, simply put, the test taker receives an input uh, in the form of a written or oral text uh, on a specific topic, and they're supposed to uh, produce a response, again, either written or oral, on the same topic. For an assessment to be integrated, it is expected that the a test taker actually uses in their response the ideas from the source texts and develops them further. This form of assessment is uh, performance-based and it, as you can see, it uh, assesses complex and multiple uh, skills simultaneously. Uh, I now would like here in this list to show you that, um, uh, which is by no means exhaustive, that integrated assessment has been around since the 80s already and is becoming more and more popular uh, because of uh, the internationalization of universities. You will recognize the names of some uh, standardized, uh, global standardized testing companies. Uh, it seems to be that Canadian universities have um, started using integrated assessment as well. But I would like to draw your attention to the last two, the University of Leuven and uh, the University of Reading, because the practitioners at these universities actually uh, taught me everything I know about integrated assessment. Um, they themselves uh, are creators and designers of inter pure integrated tests. And I have, I've been lucky enough to see how it works in practice, to teach um, integrated assessment and uh, to assess it as well, uh, administer it. All right, the, this slide uh, shows you just, uh, gives you an idea how uh, those um, commercial and standardized tests um, have integrated within their tests one particular in, or two integrated tasks. Uh, Trinity, PT Academic, and TOEFL IBT, the last two appear uh, where are uh, computer-based tests. Um, it's interesting that we have either two-staged or a three-stage um, 
task. Uh, they all have in common that there is the input, the reading, which I was telling you. We can see that the number of words of the text is more or less similar. And the output uh, tends to be um, a summary or an essay or both, as you can see here. Again, the timing provided is also in um, pretty similar and uh, the uh, length of the output as well. Uh, listening into speaking is not very popular yet, uh, uh, not widely used, but uh, it it's also appears here in the form of uh, listening input, as you can see, and the candidate is then asked to retell the lecture, or in the case of Trinity, engage in a conversation, a discussion on the main points of uh, the input. I'll move on to my next slide, because here I'm going to show you in more in depth how the TEEP works. The TEEP stands for Test of English for Educational Purposes. It was um, uh, created, and it was very, it was extremely innovative at the time in the 1980s uh, by John Slatt at the University of Reading in the UK. It has now become uh, very well known uh, across the UK, and it is the, it's accepted as an admissions examination, both at the University of Reading, of course, but at about another 15, 20 UK universities. Uh, the TEEP writers define it as a proficiency test, small scale. Um, it's about every year, about 1,500 uh, test takers but high stakes. And BALIP, the British Association of uh, Lecturers in AP, especially commends uh, this test in, uh, in a re review of examinations, simply because it uniquely, uh, quite uniquely, tests and focuses on the EAP skills of uh, the test takers, rather than focusing on general English. It is a pure, uh, integrated test, I would say. Um, this is what it looks like in practice. It, is, it has the format of a reading and listening into writing. Uh, the candidates are given a focus task, which is none other than the essay title. Um, the example here uh, is about the issue or topic of collaborative learning. Uh, Statements are provided in the essay title, and the students would have to discuss these statements. Uh, then uh, they are provided a reading a text uh, and a listening, um, and they listen to a lecture, uh, after which uh, they write an essay. Um, now, as graders uh, we, um, and markers, we receive um, an, A3, an A3 rubric, a paper, with, uh, as you can see here, only three criteria, uh, but nine bands, nine, nine bands, including half bands. Uh, in the criteria, you will be familiar with two of them because uh, they overlap with independent uh, writing assessment, organization and argument, and grammar and vocabulary. But uh, when we are grading an integrated uh, writing, uh, we need to focus on content. By content, we look at whether the student has uh, produced an academic style, whether they have shown a critical stance, uh, we can read their voice uh, in that essay, whether the ideas they discuss, they evaluate, are relevant uh, to the topic, and whether they have incorporated ideas from the sources. Uh, so, uh, moving on, I'm now going to uh, focus on strengths and weaknesses. So, taking a break, before I show you uh, my own examination, um, uh, integrated for our students. Um, the literature, uh, there is a lot of research, of course, in uh, integrated assessment available on the internet. And um, uh, um, these researchers all agree, more or less, that uh, integrated assessment does have quite a few strengths especially when we're looking at the university context. So uh, we have heard this week that the university context is uh, very special, and the raison d'etre of a university is based, simply put, to build knowledge, new knowledge, 
based on previous knowledge. Now, in order to do so, we need uh, quite a few skills and strategies. Skills such as the ability to search for appropriate information, to know where to go and how to do it, to then read, have uh, extensive and accurate reading uh, abilities that we um, uh, can uh, process the information that is available to us and understand it very well, the existing information. And then from that, to be able to extract uh, what is necessary to complete, for example, a task or a research. And uh, in doing so, uh, then the ability to communicate, communicate our new ideas in a format that can be understood in this global world. Uh, where, uh, where we speak basically English um, and use English. Um, so we're talking about the basic skills of reading and writing, of course, and um, presenting and so on. So therefore, if a language uh, examination does um, incorporate, does integrate the skills as integrated assessment does, we are uh, reaching a level of authenticity, which is quite, which reflects, uh, reflecting the university context and the skills that students need. On top of that, uh, str the strategies that have been studied in various uh, investigations are uh, of the metacognitive and cognitive type. We're talking about self-regulatory studies, uh, strategies such as monitoring, evaluating, completing a task, managing time, um, reviewing, and so on, goal setting, yes, and many others. And the so-called discourse synthesis strategies are uh, such as organizing, selecting, connecting. Um, these, uh, this examination has been, show, has been proven to actually uh, really, that the test taker, I'm sorry, the test taker in this examination needs to apply these strategies to complete it successfully. Um, the, all these strategies and skills that are learned are transferable. Transferable to different fields, different languages, and uh, different contexts. Because in reality, a business context also requires a response uh, to an input of usually written or spoken, of course. And uh, it is considered a fair examination because all candidates receive the same input and uh, background knowledge, uh, we don't, they don't have to write background, background knowledge or experience. It has uh, been proven that it is a valid examination in terms uh, of predictive validity and construct validity. Um, it is uh, discipline and genre dependent. This was also discussed in one of the plenary. Um, it's quite important that we're able to uh, design a test that is specific and res uh, it reflects the needs of our test takers. And what I have experienced, uh, and it's, in my opinion, one of the strongest um, um, uh, positives of uh, this examination is the positive feed a positive washback in the classroom. The teacher no longer will focus on developing test-wise test -wise, text -wise in the strategies such as guessing or eliminating the absurd answer or uh, predicting, but we're actually going to start teaching uh, su uh, summarizing skills, paraphrasing skills, building up, uh, building the vocabulary of uh, the students, um, referencing skills, how to avoid plagiarism, um, uh, how to, and reading, reading, reading for specific information and accurately and to uh, develop ideas. Going back a minute, because uh, I think, yes. So I just wanted to say that uh, has, it has quite a few strengths. Let's look at the weaknesses. Um, there are challenges, rubrics. I see one of the weakest ones <coughs> the rubrics. Uh, because um, there, is, uh, there tends to be a lot of rate of variability. If the rubrics are not clear, uh, are not positive, if there is not enough standardization or moderation, 
which is what I have experienced at the University of Reading. The way they have solved this problem is by standardizing all the raters uh, several times and uh, uh, moderating our, also our own um, uh, marking. So there tends to be quite a rate, a rate of variability, which of course uh, doesn't, uh, which affects the reliability of this test. Uh, in terms of the test takers, uh, well, without training, test takers do cannot succeed in um, uh, performing well in this examination. Uh, they have two, two tendencies. One is to completely ignore the ideas and the sources, so they don't integrate them at all, or they, uh, they take up uh, strategies, they do things like, such as copying, uh, copying, a, sorry, it's doing its own, uh, copying and, and patch writing and so on. Right, uh, the other problems we can discuss later. Now, I'm moving on to my, my own. Uh, examination. Um, I uh, have been inspired, have been inspired by uh, the University of Leuven and uh, our team. I uh, decided to write an, uh, also an integrated examination, an entrance as well, uh, examination for a very specific context. I'm sorry. There we go. Um, biochemistry, biochemistry, an, an undergraduate biochemistry co to, um, course taught at the, both at the University of Linz and at the University of uh, Inceski Budjavice um, in English. So um, I went, uh, I did a lot of preparation and a lot of thinking uh, beforehand uh, on, uh, before writing the test. So uh, I looked at the examination type, it is an admissions, uh, it's supposed to be proficiency, relatively low stakes and a tiny scale. Um, it's been around for three years and I think we've tested about uh, under 30 students so far, so it's quite small. Uh, who are the candidates? Uh, this was my big question to create this candidate profile. No, they are uh, school leavers and uh, they should have uh, a, quite a high level of English. Um, B2 is the required uh, level, entry level of course, and they are uh, definitely uh, into sciences. Uh, if they're going to study biochemistry. Now, um, I also had a look at the CEFA. I studied uh, the CEFA um, criteria for level B2, and I came across in the Alte Kandu statements at level three, this following table, very simple, but quite illustrative. And um, it breaks down the activities that, is, uh, are, that take place at a university in, uh, in, in at the university. So I would like to draw your attention to the fourth column, a language, language skills required uh, in each um, area of activity. And if, if you will notice that writing appears in every single one. So writing is a skill uh, that is definitely needed by the university students um, in their communication and uh, studies. Uh, I then selected, um, decided to select which areas uh, to develop my examination in, and I decided to choose lectures and presentations and management, management of a study. Uh, right, and this is what I came up with. So my uh, integrated assessment has two tasks, uh, a listening into writing and a uh, reading into writing. Uh, in the listening into writing, the students um, are supposed to imagine that their professor has asked them to come up with ideas for seminar uh, discussions, and that this, the candidate has heard a lecture or a talk on the radio about um, the effects of food packaging on human health. Uh, after listening to the lecture uh, twice, uh, the students are then required to write a persuasive text 
basically, it would be a presentation that they would then uh, to, uh, introduce to their class and um, uh, persuade them, convince them of the, the value of this topic. In the reading and to writing, uh, they are asked to read, uh, they are asked basically to choose an internship and uh, the internships are provided in the uh, text, and then to basically write a cover letter, uh, an email to the study department. Um, so uh, uh, there, there, in both texts, uh, both tasks, I have provided the, uh, a lot of scaffolding, uh, instructions, um, and part of the rubrics actually in uh, uh, the rubrics are to do with uh, how far they've been able to follow those instructions. Being aware of the fact that these students would have absolutely no experience with integrated test assessment itself. So this is what my rubrics look like. They are holistic rather than analytic and uh, basically I've uh, used the, the can-do statements uh, that were available both at, in the CEFR and the ALTE at level um, B2. All right, my, uh, my, my uh, uh, presentation has come to an end. <laughs> These are the references and I just want to conclude and say that I hope uh, <laughs> It's doing what it wants here. So <laughs> it wants me really to stop and disappear. <laughs> anyway, yes, I, will, uh, I should summarize. I'm, um, I'm really convinced uh, that this integrated <laughs> assessment um, yes, has a future uh, at the tertiary level. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Yes, the same type of discussion and opinion uh, expression that we do in the humanities, for example. But uh, there is the critical voice has to be there is there, and it appears later when um, the scientists are writing up the discussion of, of their results. Uh, when uh, they, they have results, they have to always evaluate uh, those results. And this requires critical thinking as well. The ability to, and the connection, those, uh, the, how to connect their results to existing literature, all right, um, and uh, how, how, into how it can be implemented, right, future implementation. And this is all a, a critical thinking, it's a critical stance. We talk about the writer's voice being present, mm -hmm. which is usually expressed uh, through uh, modern verbs, isn't it? <laughs> and, and so on in academic writing. So the stance is also there in sciences. Sciences is not purely descriptive. It is not. There has to be a critical voice. So that is in the later. And in my examination, I can't really ask for. Um, but can you show a good example of a text in this form of information to be? Sorry, do you want to see here? And you could do one. It was a slide with. With my with my own. Sorry, just just like they should prove their ability to study. Yeah, I'm not saying anything beyond what you know. Yeah, but I'm just saying that you have the skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
you have more experience. Uh, yes, no, you're right. That is an issue, and. Mm, so my experience, and I, have, I don't have any empirical basis to say this, but the product, when there is a certain level of consistency, the way they express the, these ideas then later on in their output, and the, the consistency and logic and connectivity all the discourse synthesis uh, strategies that I was uh, talking about earlier, th these, those are visible. And when those are um, there, sort of the idea is connected, uh, the idea of flows. So it's taken from the notes and then they've developed it further with examples or whatever, <laughs> explanations, that means that they've understood it. All right, of so you focus on yes. students that go into your in detail rather than the main ideas of the text or of the lecture. Well, uh, they are free to take what they want from the lecture. Okay. This is what I'm, I'm giving them the freedom uh, to take, and this gives me the understanding. I'm given the, I understand how well they're able to um, uh, how well they are able to integrate, uh, incorporate, uh, develop those ideas. You know, if somebody is just patch writing or copying, uh, it will look it's, it will look uh, chaotic because they'll, put, they'll just take one idea they really haven't understood. Hmm? They'll take an idea, they'll put it in, they'll use some very uh, lovely language, <laughs> and then they move on to another idea which is not connected at all right. to the previous one. So, yeah, I'm so you, this is to do with the rubrics, yes. how we interpret the rubrics. Sorry. Sorry, I was more interested in reasoning because that's where noting really makes sense. So um, I was wondering like, what, what kind of thing you look for when you read students' notes. Like, uh, do you look for uh, similarities between the notes they wrote and the content of the essay, or how do you evaluate this as a comprehension task? I don't. Okay. We, we don't. We don't really. So there are no points for the note-taking part. It's all. Uh, in, in my, there is another related question here on the yes. line. What what are the criteria for assessment? So maybe we can uh, also the rubrics we need uh, again to yeah. show. Yeah. Where are the rubrics? No. Uh, it's not working, and can you help me? Yeah, we have to go back to so, this. Um, yeah, here. Well, my particular test is holistic. I mean, the team is one thing, of course. It's very well developed, very well researched. Uh, so I'll talk about the team. So the team in the listening, for the listening test, um, which is tough, because they listen to this 15-minute lecture at once, mm -hmm. right? And they have 20 questions, 20 comprehension, uh, 13 comprehension questions, and they have to fill in one or two words, all right? And then we give points. They're given points mm -hmm. for that. But it's um, in terms of weight and the, and the final uh, grade, it's, um, it's not really, uh, it doesn't have much weight. All right, because, uh, because it is the difference between comprehension questions, which are easy marked, let's say, and notes, which are open, or open questions, they don't have to be notes really. Yes. I would like to know maybe a bit more about your experience, like how, how you evaluate those, because I'm struggling with that myself. Okay, so in this particular test, I do not, we do not really evaluate them. They, I, you, we, use, we use them as, um, we use them as a basis to see whether the student, the test taker, has been able to incorporate the ideas from the sources. Right. So checking basically if that mirrors Yes, because in the effects of plastic, uh, the health effects of plastic on environmental effects of plastic on, on packaging, I have four like main areas for them to focus their attention on. So uh, the positive aspects of plastic packaging. Yes, what's positive? The negative. Mm -hmm. The negative, the effects on health. What are the effects of health? And they are free to write what they what they 
understand from the lecture. Sorry, Laura, I'm going yes. to interrupt the discussion. You can follow up uh, later on at coffee break uh, yes. because in a minute there should be another speaker uh, of connecting. Of course. So, so I'm just going to introduce him first. And I'll 